There's something about creepy mysteries that has always taken the internet by storm. The Sonic the Hedgehog franchise is no stranger to that. While not so much in official media, more so on the fan side of things. One of the most famous, if not most iconic, scary, creepy games to ever exist is Sonic.exe, but it is a fan project. What if I told you that this game was actually referenced by the official Sonic social media team, and there is a possibility that it could be canon. What is it about this game that makes it so popular and so iconic? A lot a lot of people will say in regards to creepy horror stuff a lot of people will say it's that feeling of the unknown for example people make conspiracy videos about mario 64 because it gave this weird ominous feeling or if you've ever been alone in a large room they call it like the back room effect you know if you're in like a mall or something like that but if you're in a large open space and it's just you in there it's not the feeling of being alone it's the feeling that someone else might be in there as well or maybe you're watching a scary movie and you know a jump scare is about to happen, but you kind of peek your eye open a little bit, even though you know something scary is about to happen that's gonna terrify you, you still wanna look. Something about all those feelings can probably be tied into Sonic EXE, plus a little bit of internet memes. In today's video, we're gonna do a deep dive into why Sonic.exe is so popular, how it spread, why people are so fascinated by it, and this new theory that this game might actually be canon, at least to some universe of Sonic. So with that being said, let's get right into the video. But before we do that, subscribe to the channel right now. I'll give you a second. And hopefully you have on notifications. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So recently there was an official remake for this game. And it really sparked my interest in kind of just like figuring out why this game is so popular. I also had a post recently go viral on my TikTok because of the new Tales tube that confirmed that there's a multiverse of Sonic characters. And one of the biggest things that I noticed in my comments was someone said that, does this mean that Sonic.exe is canon? With over 1,500 likes and a lot of replies, there's something about this character, there's something about Sonic.exe that really gets people going. It's all all over the internet it's one of the biggest memes within the sonic world but i guess to understand why this is even a thing you kind of have to understand the origins of creepypastas as well as the history of the game itself so for those of you wondering creepypasta is kind of like an internet meme it's a popular subgenre of copy pasta which consists of short horror fictions and urban legends mainly distributed via word of mouth online essentially it's the internet meme version of horror stories that spread online one of the most famous ones other than sonic.exe would be the super mario 64 i Iceberg, which makes a lot of outrageous conspiracy theories and claims but there's something about this that always fascinated me is when a lot of us were locked up in our house especially during 2020 when stuff like this came to rise the origin of sonic.exe actually starts off as a story the creator of the pasta jc the hyena created a story based off of the original sonic the hedgehog game that was actually haunted yes believe it or not there's actual lore to this game so why don't we do like a little bit of a deep dive and just give you like a little bit of background story on this so you guys can kind of understand what exactly the original creepypasta was about that this game is based off of. So the original Sonic.exe story centers around someone named Tom who is a young man who is a big fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, especially the older games. He claimed that he had not played any glitchy or hacked games before though he admitted that he didn't want to after the experience he had. He then proceeded to recount his experience saying that saying how he received a CD and an accompanying letter from his friend Kyle begging him to destroy the disc before it's too late and to not play the game. Ignoring his friend's warnings, Tom played the game and began to encounter odd, somewhat disturbing phenomena. From the title card featuring evil looking Sonic with bloody eyes and glowing pupils, a wide smile to the presence of a file select screen similar to that of the one in Sonic the Hedgehog 3 with a red background and chilling music playing. He noticed that he played Hill Act 1 and there was a lot of dead animals in the game. And he eventually encountered Sonic at the end of the level with his eyes closed. The next part of the game said, hello, do you want to play with me? Let's play hide and seek. It shows Tails trying to run away from Sonic.exe. He does a little jump scare on the screen and then he chases after him. After Sonic.exe killed Tails, he played the next level as Knuckles where there's a boss battle with Sonic.exe. After playing as Knuckles, he lost a boss battle to Sonic.exe where Sonic.exe defeats Knuckles obviously in a very gruesome way and Tom decided to stop playing the game. So after he took his break, he was having nightmares throughout the night. He decided to boot up the game and play as Dr. Robotnik, met with the same fate as all the other characters that suffered a very gruesome and very scary ending fate. At the end of the game, a very <laughs> gruesome and realistic image of Sonic.exe popped up on his screen that said, I am God. When he turned around in real life, he looked behind him and saw a bloodied Sonic plush 
on his actual bed. The person who played the game, Tom, met a very untimely fate in real life. And there actually was a sequel to Sonic.exe, which is more of like a murder mystery story with a detective. It's not as interesting as the first one because the first one is what the game is based off of. But that is the full story of Sonic.exe as far as the lore goes. The story itself, not the actual game, was created in 2011. Someone on Game Jolt released a game titled Sonic.exe, which was based on the Creepypasta story. And a couple months later, a YouTuber named Mr. Creepy pasta uploaded a reading of the story of sonic.exe in two parts so this led to the game started to build up some hype but it wasn't until may 5th 2013 when the biggest youtuber ever pewdiepie uploaded a let's play with a walkthrough of sonic.exe and after that happened it was over sonic.exe eventually spread to being a cultural icon i'm not kidding if you look at the official sonic social media team back in 2017 they actually made this post that referenced sonic.exe if you see big the cat right there he's a sonic exe version and then if you look at this it's the actual sonic.exe on the official sonic social media channel there's something about this character right here with the blood red eyes and the absolute demonic possession and creepiness that really took the internet by storm there was also another time in 2021. If you look right here at this post, they said, giving some love to the Game Gear era. Wait a second. Is that with the Sonic.exe creepypasta text? If you look all the way in the corner, right next to me right here, what is that right there? This statement is being made once again by the official Sonic social media team, which is goes to show how culturally iconic and impactful this game slash meme really is. So with the multiple references by the official Sonic social media team about Sonic.exe, plus this new discovery that there can be infinite sonics in this multiverse that was spoken about in tales tube is it possible that this game could be canon i don't see why not realistically there's no better argument for this game having its own canon than those social media posts and the tales tube so you guys let me know down below if you guys agree or disagree with that but let's move on and continue to talk about the cultural importance of this game and why it's so fascinating it has inspired countless artworks countless animation videos on youtube and if you look on google there's even plushes of sonic.exe i've actually went to my local mall and seen fake Sonic.exe plushes on sale. Sonic.exe is also popular amongst the Friday Night Funking modding community. Like, look at this dude. This dude is crazy looking, bro. You'll find so much artwork about this character. It's literally insane. And here's probably the best example of how Sonic.exe is so culturally iconic and popular. Some kid at the movie theaters thought Shadow the Hedgehog, who is apparently the second most popular Sonic character of all time, was Sonic.exe. We have to roll this clip because you guys have probably seen it before. <laughs> From the moment you start from the load up screen, it gives you a very ominous, creepy vibe and you hear the actual Sonic EXE make this demonic laugh. And then from there, the game just kind of feels like this endless runner. Like you just keep going through the level, just waiting for something to happen, just waiting for the jump scare to take place. And something about this feeling, the feeling that you know something is gonna happen with the creepy, ominous music playing is something that I think will always captivate you and make you wanna play more. If you look right here, look at Tails, look how scared he is, bro. From the moment moment you finally see Sonic in sunny, green, and bright green hills, and then it turns into a absolute nightmare. There's something about this that just makes people want to keep playing. Time over, ready or not. Like when you see these jump scares, like right there, oh my God, that just scared the hell out of me, even though I've seen this already. But yeah, you see him coming for Tails. Like the fact that there's no escape and you know it's coming, it's still the creepiest, most unsettling thing. And just look at his design. It just looks terrifying. So I think just like the terrifying aspect is always something that's going to draw people towards it, whether it's with memes, whether it's actually being scared. This is something that's going to draw people to the game. I would say in addition to just this endless runner, and then when he finally pops up, on the screen when you finally see him after staring at the screen in the same animation for over three minutes when he pops up right there there's something about it that just gives me the chills to this day and don't forget the ending of the game when he just pops up on the screen with the jump scares as well and he's just staring at you there's something about this game that just breaks that fourth wall and then this last jump scare right here ready watch this guys ready i hope you guys are ready for it let's turn up the volume real quick if you guys are ready for this i don't think you guys are ready for it ready three two see you know it's coming you know what's coming? Look, it's so still. Oh my god! Oh. 
Jeez. So in addition to the violence of the game, it's very gruesome and it's very scary. There's something about this game because throughout the game, you notice that it's always talking to you. It's not talking to the characters in the game as opposed to like most horror stories or horror games or any type of media that you experience with that. This game knows that you're terminally online and you're on the computer playing the Sonic.exe creepypasta. So it's talking to you. If you look at the text right here, like it's talking to you. It's talking to the person that's playing the game, which is I think is the most unsettling aspect of it. So I would say the reason why this game is so popular is probably because PewDiePie, who was the biggest YouTuber ever, did a let's play of this game and then the internet memes is really what took it to the next level. In addition to the game being meant to scare you and humans naturally being drawn to things that excite us or scare us. So let me know what you guys think about Sonic.exe in the comments down below. Let me know if you have any memories with this game. Could this game actually be canon now that we know that there's a multiverse of Sonic characters and the official Sonic social media team has actually referenced this before? That is up for you guys to decide based off of all the information that we laid out for you guys and that is why the game is so popular.